Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this video, we're going to talk about Star Wars The Force Awakens. Now you guys know I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan. I grew up watching Star Wars. It came out a little bit before I was born by a little while. But I watched it as a kid and I watched it a bunch of times as I was growing up. I've always been a fan of Star Wars, but I'm not what you might call a Star Wars fan, if that makes any sense. I'm not super into it, I've just always appreciated it and I liked it. And, and, and I mean, it's Star Wars. Who doesn't like it? At least a little bit. And I'm beyond a little bit. I'm just not one of those people that's in love with it. So I thought it would be interesting if I had a discussion video about the new movie in the context of the entire franchise and then just in general as a film. I'm not particularly tied to it, so I'm not going to be biased towards it. And I don't dislike Star Wars in any way, so I'm not going to be biased against it. It should be fairly, fairly in the middle, so I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on it. And I'd like to hear what you guys think by the end of the video. Make sure you leave some comments. Uh, I think it'll be an interesting conversation. So... Uh, there's no question this movie is a box office juggernaut. It's already passed up Avatar in the domestic sales, and then worldwide, it, it may not end up beating Avatar, but it's doing really incredibly well. But I don't really care about the box office, to be completely honest, because movies make money based on what people think they're going to be. Sure, they continue to make money if they are a good movie, or if they're good movies, but generally box office sales don't indicate necessarily how good a film is. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Star Wars movie, no matter how good or bad it would have been, would have made boatloads of money just because it's a new Star Wars movie. So, we're not going to worry about the technical stuff. Like I said, this is just going to be a discussion video, my thoughts, and then your thoughts, and then we can all talk about it, okay? Uh, Alright, so first of all, wow, I just smacked the whole table. I'm getting excited just talking about Star Wars. Now. Um, so, first of all, I think it is one of the better Star Wars movies. I discount the prequel trilogy though some of them ended up getting better toward the end, we're going to set those aside. Uh, top three movies for me in the Star Wars franchise are this one, the newest one, but it's not at the top, it's at the bottom of the top three. So it's number three. Number two, probably A New Hope, and then number one is Return of the Jedi. That's my favorite list. That's what I think. What you guys think, that's up to you. Let me know. Uh, I do think it's up there, though, in terms of overall quality. Um... Let's just talk about the movie instead of more rambling. So, special effects. This movie was chock full of special effects. And I know Star Wars people tend to uh, get a little on guard when we talk about special effects. Just because of how the prequel trilogy was completely CGI for the most part. Uh, completely for the most part, by the way. You can use that if you want to. And then the, uh, the, the revisions and things that Lucas did for the original trilogy... It's a touchy subject, but this movie, obviously, it was used appropriately, the CGI, the special effects, everything looked good, it looked like it was supposed to be there, and it's how it was originally shot, so we're good. I think there were two times throughout the movie where I thought, well, that was not the best CGI, but two, let's say, three second portions of a two hour and, what, 20 minute movie, 15 minutes, something like that, not too bad, so special effects, no problem at all. Acting. Acting hasn't always been Star Wars' strong suit. I mean, let's be honest, Harrison Ford, not the most diverse actor. He did okay for Han Solo in the originals, and he still is, so that's fine. We're not going to worry about that. Uh, Daisy Ridley, she did a great job. I liked Rey a lot. I really liked her character. Um, John Boyega, if that's how you pronounce his name, he did a good job in his role. Uh, I think the only issue I took with his role, we'll get to in a little bit. Um, so overall, the acting was pretty good. I don't really have too many issues with that. Uh, Han Solo still felt like Han Solo, so that's fine. Oh, by the way, this will have spoilers in it. I should mention that before we get into it anymore. Uh, I had th some things spoiled for me because people are a bunch of scumbags on the internet, and they like to take away other people's happiness because they can't find their own. Uh, so that happened for me. It was unfortunate. I didn't get to enjoy the movie as much as I would have liked. Uh, but this will have spoilers in it. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, or if you don't want to get spoiled... You can click away now. Alright, so the acting we covered is fine. The writing, on the other hand... <sighs> I had some issues with the writing. For the most part, the writing was okay. Uh, but I felt like uh, Finn's dialogue was a little out of place. It didn't quite feel right. Especially considering he was stolen, presumably, at a very young age. And then raised, kind of brainwashed, to become a stormtrooper. Right, so he's reverse, not reversing. He's fighting or um, whatever. He's going against his conditioning. 
Uh, but he's acting like a completely normal person as if he'd never been in that whole situation in the first place, making wisecracks all the time, making jokes, talking to Han Solo like he's the boss. It was just, it felt out of place and a little irksome. Obviously, it's not a big deal. That's not the kind of thing that makes or breaks a movie, but the writing for Finn did feel a little bit odd. Uh, I did like a lot of the lines that Ray had, though that felt nice. And, um... Well, we'll get into some of the other things as we go, because it's not really a writing issue, it's just a general direction, general concept issue. So, writing for the most part, I liked it. I didn't I didn't really have a problem with anything other than Finn. Um, one thing I want to talk about briefly is the feel of Star Wars. Now, like I said, I'm not the hugest fan, but I have seen all of the movies many, many times each. And I have to say, I did not get the same feel out of the prequel trilogy as I did the originals. I mean, they still had the same, like, iconic music, iconic score, and, and, you know, lightsabers and things, so you realize it's a Star Wars movie, but it doesn't have that feel. You can't quite put a finger on it, but there's something missing. Now, for me, this movie had the feel. I, I thought they did a good job of making it a Star Wars movie, not just a movie with the name, so I really liked that. I'm glad they took the lightsaber fights back to where they used to be, instead of all the flipping around and craziness that we saw with Yoda and Dooku, and all that other stuff. They got rid of all that, so I'm super happy about that. I thought the lightsaber fights were great. So, that it, the whole thing felt right. It felt really good. I liked the way they went about it. Um, however, the substance in this movie wasn't... It wasn't there. Uh, now, some would argue that none of the Star Wars movies have a whole lot of substance, which might be true. I mean, they're not, like, the best storytelling examples in, in history, but they were fine. And, and this movie... I'm not sure. I feel kind of empty about it. A after watching it, I feel like there was something not there. It felt like a Star Wars movie, but it felt like they needed something. There was no meat and taters. There, there was something missing. And I think that's because a lot of the story uh, was left out. Not that they wrote it and didn't put it in. Maybe, I don't know. But we didn't get it on our end. Whatever it may be, we didn't get it. So for Ren, for example, we find out who he is. Yeah, he's Han and Leia's son. That's fine. But what is his motivation? What is his goal? Why is he obsessed with Darth Vader? What is all of his... What, what is he doing? What is his deal? We don't really know. We just know that he doesn't like his father anymore and he's turned to the dark side and wants power and likes Darth Vader. That's fine, but... I wanted something more. I wanted to know what drives him. What's his goal? What's he doing? You know? Things like that. Why does he have that helmet? Is he just trying to emulate Vader? Why does he have the voice thing? Again, is he, is he emulating Vader or does he have something going on? And for the record, uh, what's with the voice thing? Did anybody else have trouble understanding him sometimes? Uh, it felt a little bit to me like Bane. I had some issues with the voice. It sounded cool. Hard to understand, and they even had um, Poe mention it in the movie, which I thought was kind of funny. Uh, but so, what's up with Ren's voice? I don't, I don't understand what's going on with that. And then his lightsaber, is that supposed to be Vader's lightsaber that he's fixed, and now it has the side things, or is that his own lightsaber? I, I read some things about it before the movie came out, came out, talking about how he made his own, and that's why it doesn't work quite right, and it needs the exhaust ports and things like that. I didn't see that in the movie. Now, maybe I missed it, and I'm going to see it again next week, and I'll talk about it more then, maybe. Uh, but things like that weren't in there, and I just thought it would have been nice to kind of round out the movie a little bit. Another example, Captain Phasma. Can we say Boba Fett, anyone? She's barely in the movie. Looks awesome. Really cool concept. She's in the movie for about three minutes. Oh, and by the way, she ruined the entire thing for the bad guys. She couldn't take a hit, and then she basically ruined the entire plan for the bad guys and helped the good guys. So, not the best character development, I have to say. So, if she's in another movie, that's going to be a tough one to sell. Uh, we'll see. And that'll be unfortunate, because like I said, really cool character. It's very, very disappointing. And speaking of Phasma and ruining the bad guys' plan, the new Super Death Star, which is the Star Killer base, this giant planet that shoots a Super Death Beam... Fine, that's awesome, that's cool. Did anybody else wonder why they would have designed it with such a critical weakness so obviously exploitable? That was kind of, uh, maybe it was meant to be, pay homage to the original Death Star? I don't know. Uh, obviously it's not a big enough deal to worry about, but did anybody else notice that? At least say you noticed it. I'm curious if that's something that stood out to other people. And how quickly, how quickly they were able to devise a plan to defeat this giant planet. It didn't go according to plan perfectly, but still, they were able to take it out fairly easily. So, I'm curious about that. Alright, 
So similar in a similar vein, let's also talk about R2-D2. He's barely in the movie because he's in power saving mode. Why don't we want to wake him up? Because C-3PO says he doesn't have any useful information most likely. Then by the end of the movie, the piece of information that we absolutely need for any of it to have made a difference, R2-D2 happens to have and wakes up coincidentally. That felt a little bit odd to me. I think they would have done better if the piece that BB-8 was carrying was the entire map and they finally got it by the end of the movie. Everybody's happy, everybody's got the map, we're going to find Luke. No problems. But having it be the one piece and then R2-D2 wakes up and comes over, uh, I don't know if that, that felt a little forced. Again, it's not a movie breaker, but it, it felt a little odd, especially considering they mentioned it in the beginning part of the movie, and then by the end, it just happens. We don't know why R2-D2 wakes up, or why he's got the information, or why C-3PO said he wouldn't have it, but all of a sudden he does and everybody, everything works out, everybody's happy. So that felt a little bit odd. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure who to blame for these types of issues. I'm not sure if it's J.J. Abrams. I know he has kind of a track record of uh, setting things up and then not knowing how to finish them. So maybe that's where we're getting some of these issues. I don't know. Again, they're not huge things, but they're things that I think warrant some discussion. And maybe we'll get some resolutions in the, in the coming movies. Maybe we won't. I don't know. All right, so let's talk about Luke since we mentioned R2-D2 and finding Luke at the end. Uh, one of the biggest trailers for the movie, I think it might have been the international one that had the most with Luke in it, uh, it's even got him doing the voiceover work, which Mark Hamill's known for, coincidentally, uh, he's in the movie all of, what, maybe two minutes? I feel like that was a bit of a gimmick to get people on board, I mean, they would have been on board anyway, but did anybody else feel a little bit cheated that Luke wasn't really in the movie? I really, really, really wanted him to be in the movie, and just seeing him up there at the very end, it was it kind of it was cool. It brought back these feelings of nostalgia, and I was like, "Yes, Luke." And then, and the movie's over. That's kind of a bummer, and especially since they used him to hype the movie, and he wasn't in it. That was disappointing to me. So I'd like to know what you guys think about that, also. And Ray, is she connected to him? Is that his daughter? What's up with that? I'm curious. And then also, one thing I want to point out that I thought was a thing that I wasn't sure, so I asked some people on Twitter today, the blue lightsaber is the one Luke lost in, was it Jedi? No. What? I don't remember which one he lost it in. Anyway, it was 5, right? Episode 5? Which was not Jedi, it was Empire. Anyway, the, the, the blue lightsaber is the one that she has, which I thought was a cool thing. So maybe they'll play that into the story and actually put it in there. That would be a nice, nice detail to have. I think that'd be cool. And then the last thing, which is a super spoiler, is Han Solo's death. That, like I said, was spoiled for me and made the movie, made that part of the movie a lot less impactful. Otherwise, I think that was really the only thing that had significant impact in the whole movie. I mean, we introduced some new characters, um, so that was good. But I feel like this movie was, even though it's episode 7, mostly a uh, an origin story movie. So... They didn't have a whole lot to go, to go with. They just kind of introduced the characters and set their place in the universe, which it's not a problem. It's just, that's what it was. And I think that might be why some people are feeling like the movie wasn't as good as it could have been. Uh, maybe it was a slower pace or, like I said, didn't have quite as much substance. They really wanted to establish the characters. And I think that's okay. It didn't bother me, um, but it's something worth noting. And then the last character I want to mention is the new big bad guy. What is up with that? Did I miss something? Why is there a giant guy? Is he a giant? Is it just a giant hologram? We don't know. Why does he look like one of the monsters from I Am Legend? Who is he? Where was he all this other time? Is he that old? Is he new? What's his deal? Why is he in charge? Why is everybody listening to him? He's just a hologram, which is fine. I mean, that's how it was with uh, uh, Palpatine. So that's fine, but uh, I would have liked to have some more explanation, which is kind of how uh, I felt leaving the movie. Where was all of the explanation? I wanted some more substance. The movie was really, really good. Lots of great everything other than the meat. I wanted some more meat. Maybe a little less Flash, but the Flash was fine. I liked that. I thought Poe Dameron was a great character. He did a good job. So that was good, but not one thing was wrong with the movie that I can say. It was just an overall sense of wanting more, but not in a good way, in kind of like a where was it kind of way. So I definitely want more. I'm looking forward to the rest of the movies. I like the way this one was done, but I feel like we needed something else. It felt a little bit, uh, like I said, I don't know. It's hard to kind of describe this, but I'm curious what you guys think. So 
at the end of the at the end of the day, as people like to say, I thought it was a really good movie. Really enjoyed it. Easily one of the better movies of the Star Wars franchise, just with some ca- caveats. Caveats. So there it is. There's my take. Really good movie. A little bit of issues here and there. Let me know what you guys think. I'd like to hear uh, your discussions in the comment section below, and I'd like to uh, go back and forth and talk about it some more. Maybe I missed something. Like I said, I'll see it again next week, and we'll go from there. But as of right now, I did enjoy it, but uh, I wanted a little bit more. So there it is. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.